Let's make the bass from Pony by Genuine. You can download this preset along with over 190 other useful presets in my pack called Sounds You Know. A link for that's in the description. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Formant filter to get some vocal sounds from your synthesizer. Uh, the first one kind of sounded like it was saying yeah, but we can manipulate the Formant filter to get different vowel shapes. So we can make it say ow, oh, yo, yo, and a lot more. To get started, let's initialize a preset. And I'm just going to be using the initial saw wave here with 0% phase randomization so it doesn't clash with our sub. Then I'm going to lower this two octaves or 24 semitones so that we're playing in the bass register. Now I'm going to add in that formant filter to make it sound more vocal like. So I'm going to choose formant, A O I E. These are just different collections of vowels. And now it sounds very vocal like. And we can even get more out of that by increasing the peak. This is like increasing the resonance of these different um, peaks. So now if I move formant X and formant Y, I can get different vowel sounds. So for this sound, I'm gonna move the Y all the way down, and then I'm gonna modulate the X parameter to get a yeah sound. So I'm gonna start this at 0.84. And then I'm going to use LFO1 to control the formant X. So I'm going to set this to a saw shape by just dragging that point over. And then I'm going to set this to, I'm going to keep it at a uh, half note tempo here. Then I'm going to set it to envelope so it doesn't keep repeating. And then I'm going to drag that over to formant X. And I'm going to set this to negative one. So I know we're at 0 0.84. So Subtracting one will put us below zero here, but that's actually possible and vital. And I'll show you. So if I set this to negative 0 0.84, that's gonna go to the indicated minimum value here. Yeah. But listen to that, and then I'm gonna increase the distance that this travels. Yeah. You notice it got even more ah shaped. So that's a pretty cool thing you can do in vital. Um, a lot of these parameters um, have an indicated minimum or maximum, but you can sometimes push them even further, especially if you're using multiple modulators for that parameter. So now let's explore what more this formant filter can do. Um, we're not going to use all these features in this preset, but it's fun to know. So this top thing here is the formant transpose. Now if I decrease this, it's going to sound like it's coming from a bigger voice. Yeah. And then up here, yeah. it's almost more childlike. Um, and it's gonna sound a little bit unnatural if you're playing really low frequencies uh, with a high formant transpose, but maybe you're going for that. So it's a fun thing to control. I'm gonna use macro one to do it. I'm gonna hold shift and drag that over. And I'm gonna set this to 0 0.5 and we're back where we started. So I'm just gonna label this formant. Yeah. And another thing that's fun to control is this Y uh, parameter here. That gives us even more vowel control. So I'm gonna drag over macro one, excuse me, macro two for that. And now we can get something like an oh yeah sound. If you wanna make a Kool-Aid man preset. So I'm gonna label this O. And then for macro three, we're gonna control something that actually is different than its default value. And that's the spread here. So the spread controls how spread apart these peaks are. Now it's pretty subtle, but I'm gonna use uh, macro three. I'm gonna hold shift and make it bipolar, drag that over, and then I'm gonna set this to 0 0.4275. And I'm gonna label this spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna add in a sub oscillator to make this sound more like a bass. Because as you can see and as you can hear, um, we're cutting out the fundamental. So check this out. Yeah. These first few harmonics are some of the quietest in the sound. So I'm gonna bring those back in with another saw wave. So I'm gonna set this to negative 24 semitones, set it to 0% phase randomization. And then I'm gonna use the spectral filter here to cut out the high end. 
because we already have the high end with this oscillator right here. So the way this works is you can turn this down. This is basically like the cutoff of our filter. And then when we click on this pencil icon, this is the shape of our filter, with this being the cutoff, this being frequencies below it, and this being frequencies above it. So right now, this is basically functioning as a low pass filter. Now what I've done is I've set the grid to nine by six here, because I'm gonna set the zero point at seven ninths, and then I'm gonna drag this point here down to one sixth. So if I turn off oscillator one, we can see what this is. It's just the first three harmonics. And now altogether, instead of this being a slope down uh, with a very weak harmonic here, you're gonna see sort of a U shape. So now this functions a little bit more like a bass. So I'm gonna use macro four to control the level of that sub there. So I'm gonna turn that down, drag over macro four, label this sub. And there's quite a bit of sub in the original, so I'm gonna set this to 0 0.85. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that we've done that, we can do a little bit more here. We can prevent more than one voice from playing by setting voices to one. Now it's monophonic. Uh, it's not necessary for this preset, but we can set it to legato uh, so that we can, if notes are overlapping, it's not gonna repeat that vowel pattern. So like this. Yeah. Uh, that would be called melisma if this were actually a voice. So I'm gonna set the glide time just to give it a little bit more of a transition between notes. I'm gonna set this to 0 0.15 and then just give it a little slope for some realism. I like to drag that down just a little bit. Yeah. And then let's go to the effects section. The effects I added to this preset are very subtle. So I just turned on the compressor here and I lowered down the mix quite a bit. So I just set this to 0 0.3. Um, and then I turned down, or I turned off all these right here because I just want the downwards compression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing I forgot to do is set the sub to direct out. So this is gonna bypass that compressor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another thing I forgot to do is cut out some of that high end because you'll notice it's kind of rattling up in the upper register and that could clutter up our mix. So this is something I noticed they did in the original too. They cut out some of that high end. So I'm gonna turn on an analog uh, 12 dB filter and then I'm gonna set the cutoff to 55. And then I'm gonna route in filter one. Yeah. And now it's a little less uh, buzzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure I noticed just a little bit of width to the original bass. And I might've just been imagining that, but one thing I like to do, um, and it's very subtle, is just add in a tiny bit of chorus. So if I set this to just 10%, and I'm gonna slow this down a little bit, um, this is just gonna add a little bit of dimension and width to our sound. And I'm also gonna cut out some of the uh, low end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now hear it without. Here it is with just 10%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear how it just kind of fills out the space uh, because now we have some stereo imaging going on. So anyways, that's it. Now you can have uh, a field day with this and make all sorts of different vowel sounds uh, by manipulating the Y shape or the X shape. And you can also try this other uh, vocal pattern here, this other vowel shapes. And then I could try this O thing. Now it sounds like the fonts. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.